Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value timepieces, and today, very exciting, we are comparing the Steel Dive SD1953 versus the Invicta Pro Diver. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's compare these two affordable dive watches. So I'm not very good at doing like super cool looking digital graphics or anything like that. So we're gonna use a piece of paper and a pen. I'm gonna go down a few different categories and assign who the winner is, whether it be the Invicta Pro Diver or the Steel Dive SD 1953. There isn't always gonna be one clear winner. If a watch is pretty good in the category, it'll get a half a point. If it's obviously better, then it will get a full point. The other watch will get no points. So we've got a lot of cover, so let's jump right into it. Bracelet. I talked about this in the Steel Dive review, and I'll put that right here if you want to check it out. I'll also link it at the end of the video. You can go check it out if you want to. Bracelet on the Steel Dive, not my favorite. But how does it do against the Invicta? Well, let's find out. So the bracelet on the steel dive is brushed pretty much through its entirety. A little bit of high polish on the sides. Comes with a fold over clasp design. The clasp itself feels a bit better than the Invicta with the exception of having some very sharp edges. The Invicta does not. The biggest difference in these bracelets though is in the amount of play or how, how much distance is between the actual links. If I'm looking at the Steel Dive versus the Invicta, there is much less play on the Invicta. The Invicta doesn't have a tendency to pull out my arm hairs violently either. So while the Steel Dive has some advantages and some aspects of its bracelet that are slightly better than the Invicta, I think the clasp is better on the Steel Dive than on the Invicta. However, Overall, I think the Invicta is a much better bracelet. The Steel Dive's bracelet is almost, well, personally for me, I can't really use it. So I'm going to have to add a different strap or a different bracelet altogether. So the winner of the bracelet category is the Invicta. The Steel Dive will be awarded no points, not even a half a point for the bracelet. Crystals on here. Well, you'd think it'd be a walk away home run for the Steel Dive because it includes a sapphire crystal. However, I don't, really, I don't really even think it matters. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because I've got a 17 year old pro diver right here. And I have beat the living heck out of this watch. And there is not one scratch anywhere on this watch. With the crystal, I mean. Now there's the bezel's all messed up and it's been banged around pretty good. And some paint's been chipped off and things like that. The crystal has held up perfectly well over 17 years. The Cyclops is a bit scratched up, but the crystal itself, perfect. So I'm gonna give the Steel Dive the point on here, but I'm also gonna give the Invicta Pro Diver a half a point. And they should be actually even because the Steel Dive's Cyclops is comically large to the point where it seems almost out of place. The Invicta Cyclops is seems reasonably mag seems like it's magnifying at reasonable levels. Steel Dive still gets the point. Invicta half a point. The movement. Now well, they're exactly the same. So they both get a point. Good job, watches. Crown. Crown on both of these is really good, actually. I think they're about the same size. The Steel Dive may be ever so slightly bigger. I'm gonna give the edge to the Steel Dive simply because on looks alone, because the Steel Dive logo on the side of its crown, um, it's pretty good. And Victor's got a logo on theirs as well, but it's all highly polished. Steel Dive just looks slightly better. But the Invicta still gets a half a point because functionally they're both perfect. They both have 
very smooth threads so i don't think there's any problem with the machining on the threads on the crown on these both very functional both perfect size for me personally both have a great machining on the side actually steel dive will get three quarters of a point and the invicta will get half a point <laughs> All right, cases. They both have good cases. I think the biggest complaint about the Invicta is going to be the Invicta, we we'll call it a logo, but the name Invicta across the side of the case. Not everybody is going to like that. As far as brushing, finishing, things like that, I believe they are both equal. So they're both gonna get a point I know subjectively some people aren't going to like the Invicta on the side. Personally for me, that doesn't matter. And I'm trying to keep personal subjectivity out of this as far as how it looks. So they both get a point on the case. Both great cases. Actually, you know what? I take that back. Since the Invicta has a see-through back case, it's going to get the point. Steel Dive will get a half a point. But they're both great. Just so you can see on the inside of the Invicta. Okay, so that's, that's kind of fun for everybody. The loom on these watches. Uh, easy winner is the Steel Dive. The Steel Dive has a ceramic bezel insert and all of it lights up. That is painted. All of the uh, applied indices on the Steel Dive also light up. The hands light up, but they fade more quickly than the stuff on the dial and the bezel. The Invicta, not great at all. There's no loom on the bezel with the exception of the pip at 12 o'clock. The hour indices are pretty dim and it's kind of almost like a patina. The hands do light up fairly well, but none of it lasts more than about 10 minutes. So easy win for the steel dive when it comes to loom. <laughs> The bezel, gonna be another fairly easy win for the steel dive. Bezel action is very nice, smooth, little to no bounce, no back play at all. Very well done, and frankly, the action on the bezel of the steel dive rivals that of $500 watches. I have not all of them, but some. The bezel was one of the most surprising parts for me when I did the full review of the steel dive. So easy winner here, also has a ceramic insert, very easy to get a hold of. The Invicta, a little bit stiffer. Um, it works, it's, and it's very good compared to something like a Pagani, but it's pretty tight to get around, but no back play. I believe this insert is an aluminum insert, so you're not gonna get the longevity out of the bezel insert on the Invicta Pro Diver. However, once again, anecdotally, here's my 17-year-old Invicta Pro Diver, and it its bezel insert has held up just fine. It's knocked, bruised, and banged up a little bit, but it's not horrible. The full point is going to the Steel Dive SD 1953 for the bezel and the bezel insert. Value. So one could just simply look at the price and say, well, the Invicta is the better value. However, I don't think it's as easy as that because the Steel Dive has so many characteristics of more expensive watches from the loom, from the beauty of the dial. So they're both going to get a point for value. The Invicta goes on sale and sometimes this watch can be had for around 60 bucks, $70. I paid in the 80s for it, which is remarkable remarkable that this watch can be $80 with a Seiko automatic movement, something as beautiful as it is and a very useful watch. The Steel Dive though just has a lot of characteristics of much more expensive watches. Sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, perfect bezel, gorgeous dial. So they're both gonna get a value point because they're both, they both have value but in different ways. So dials and hands. They both have a beautiful dial in a little bit of a different way. It's going to the steel dive though, but the Invicta is getting a half a point. 
because I think the Invicta does some nice things on the dial. The one thing I don't like about the Invicta is the chrome logo that's in there. I think Steel Dive made a much better decision by printing Steel Dive and then having the same color of printing below with Automatic 300. I think Invicta gets a little bit busy with its font down there, Automatic, Professional, 200 meters, water resistant. I think it's more tastefully done on the Steel Dive. The Steel Dive's indices is much bigger. The 12 o'clock indice is really impactful on this watch. It really makes the dial jump. The colors are great. So while there's nothing particularly wrong with the Invicta, it does not beat the Steel Dive in comparison. However, it's still gonna get a half a point. Steel Dive, We'll give 1.25 points because it's that much better. Finally, when I wear these watches, how do I feel? Because that's really what it comes down to for a watch for me. How do I feel when I'm wearing the watch? I feel good wearing both watches. However, I feel better wearing the Steel Dive. Now, there's caveats to this because the bracelet is pretty poor. I, I have other bracelets though that I can put on here. So when I'm wearing a different bracelet, it feels good to me. I'm not talking about how it feels physically though. I'm talking about how it feels emotionally. There's something about the Invicta and it has mostly to do with how Invicta as a brand is seen because when I wear the Invicta out, Nobody knows that it's an Invicta. Nobody really cares except for watch nerds. And guess what? I don't run into too many watch nerds out there, out in town, in the suburban jungle. And I put a leather strap slash band on this Invicta and it kind of plays off the faux patina of the loom. And it looks great. So I like wearing both of them. I'm going to be wearing the Steel Dive more than the Invicta Pro Diver probably. It's I just know it because I really, I really, I really like the Steel Dive. I almost like wearing the Steel Dive more than I like wearing my Steinhardt, which is an amazing watch. Point's gonna go to the Steel Dive when it comes to how it makes me feel. So the winner of my meaningless little comparison between the Invicta Pro Diver and the Steel Dive SD 1953 is the Steel Dive, pretty big winner here. I think it is the better watch. And in some cases it should be because it is more expensive. You can get both of these watches on Amazon. You can get the Steel Dive cheaper from the Steel Dive's website. If you're ordering something that is not in their warehouse, it could take a long time, but they have stock on Amazon. They also have stock in the US. And I think the big seller is this uh, 19, SD 1953. I'll link both of these in the description. I don't think you can really go wrong with either one. The one that resonated more with me is the Steel Dive. I just feel like it's a pretty big step up from the Invicta outside of the bracelet. Invicta's bracelet's way better. Steel Dive, I think as a whole, better than the Invicta. Should be, it comes in a little bit more expensive, but I think it really punches well above its weight as far as value. I think they both do. Steel Dive just feels a bit better. If you wanna support the channel, you can. I'm actually giving away a watch. I will link that video in the description, link a Google form in the description too. The only thing you have to do is subscribe, follow me on Instagram, fill out the Google form. Then at the end of the month, I'm going to be giving away a Spinnaker watch. Thank you to Wrist Watch Review UK for providing that watch for me to give away. You can check out the links in the description. Those are affiliate links. You can also subscribe to my other channel. It's the Cheap Audio Man. I have a Patreon over there. You can jump on that if you want to. So don't buy a watch you can't afford. Buy one you can and enjoy every minute of it. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Watch Man. Mm -hmm.